Amen. John chapter 21. We're going to begin reading with verse 1. I don't normally read this lengthy of a passage, but I want to this morning. So, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Canaan and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we're going with you. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw in, draw it in, because of the multitude of fish. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said, Peter, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that, it was the Lord. He put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, dragging, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. We're continuing the theme, say yes to God. And I'm going to remind you, if you haven't heard the series of messages on saying yes to God, I encourage you to go back in the last few weeks. Now, Jeremiah 29, 11 basically says God has a plan for your life. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. That's what God wants to give us. Amen. Amen. Pretty awesome, isn't it? Amen. God wants us to have peace. In a troubled world, God wants us to have peace, a future. He wants us to have hope. Do you know people that don't have any hope? A lot. Yes. God wants everyone to have hope. So you don't need to raise your hands with this, but how many have turmoil in your life? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's your that was your hand raised. <laughs> How many of you have turmoil in your life? How many of you feel your life is hopeless? Okay. You know, most people don't want to admit they lack peace and or hope. It makes you feel like you're a defeated person if you admit it to somebody. Scripture says perfect peace casts out all fear. Yes. So if you have any fear, you don't have perfect peace. Now when God laid out his plan for your life, he lined up the right people, the right breaks, the right open doors. In other words, he had your yeses all planned out. 
Yes, you can accomplish your dreams. Yes, you can overcome those obstacles that you have in your life. You can overcome those trials that you face. And yes, you can succeed. The question is, will you say yes to God's yes? Will you dare to believe his promises for your life? And you may ask, why do I have to say yes if God already has it planned out? A lot of people blame God for a lot of things in life. They say, well, God's got it all planned out. And why is my life so screwed up? <clears throat> If God already has things planned out, God has given us a free will. Amen. God has given you the ability to make choices in your life. Yes. I'm going to say, be the first one to say, I, I haven't always made the best choices in my life. That's why things get screwed up, because we don't make good choices a lot of the times. Those choices include saying yes. Maybe I should say learning to say yes to God. Learning to say yes in these small things is essential for us to learn how to say yes to the bigger things in life. Now the scripture we, we read to start off with has Simon Peter announcing he was going fishing. And keep in mind earlier on, Peter had already said yes to Jesus. He had accepted him as his Lord and Savior when Jesus said, follow me. So he's already made a commitment to God. So here we have Peter announce he's going fishing. Please don't any of you announce that right now. We need to finish this message. I know some of you would love to go fishing. Peter announced he's going fishing. And the other disciples jumped right in and said, we're going with you. So they go fishing. And they fish all night. And you know the rest of the story. They caught nothing. And someone standing on the shoreline, watching. They know they're not catching anything. And someone said, cast your nets down on the other side. Now I know that you know who that someone is. But they didn't know that yet. The disciples that were in the boat didn't know it was Jesus at this point in time. Have you ever taken some time to ponder this story? Think about what's going on in this story. I can picture <clears throat> Peter. He's wore out. What happens when you get wore out? Sometimes you get cranky. That's a good word. <laughs> Sometimes you get hungry. Nobody else here does that. I know that. He's wore out from fishing all night long. He's discouraged because he didn't catch anything. He's ready to call it a night. And then someone on the shore says, put your nets down on the other side. Now, all of these guys in the boat are professional fishermen. That's what they did for a living. We also know putting your nets down on one side of the boat versus the other side of the boat <laughs> is not going to make a difference. Are you with me? I'm just thinking the story out. 
Fish don't know one side of the boat versus the other. And, and, and as the story is going, I'm thinking, okay, here's the middle of the boat. The fish are here, but they're not crossing the middle line. Go with me now. What? See? <laughs> it's not like they have boundaries. Where they can go and where they can't go. And telling them to put the nets down on the other side. Kind of sounded like it was an unreasonable request, don't you think? It also seemed like it was out of the ordinary. Here you have a carpenter telling a fisherman how to fish. But the disciples that were in the boat did it. As Paul Harvey would say, you know the rest of the story. Yeah. Let's think about some of the things that Peter could have said. Peter could have said, you're crazy. Peter could have said, hey, I got this, okay? Could have said, mind your own business. And then the classic, look, I know what I'm doing. I do this for a living. But Peter didn't say any of those things. This story is symbolic to saying yes to God. We have got to learn to say yes to God. Amen. If Peter said no, he would have missed out on a blessing for himself, and he would have missed out on a blessing for those that were with him. Yes. We need to learn God's voice speaking to us. Sometimes it's hard to know God's voice. Because we're so busy. We're not listening. Or we're not sure. So we ignore it. Say yes to God. Now, last week I felt impressed to send someone a text. Listen, if you know me, that's not me. <laughs> I don't do that. Linda does all of that for me. We get that. <laughs> Anyone ever get one from me? No. Yes. You mean Linda? Yeah, it really came from Linda. Yeah. But last week I felt impressed to send someone a text. Just to check in with them to see how they were doing. Hadn't seen or heard from them for a while. So I did. The reply came, OMG, how did you know? I was just in a wreck. God's timing. God's timing. They sent me a picture of that car. You would not believe what it looked like. Listen to God's voice. And then say yes. The children of Israel had been held captive in Egypt. God said, I'm going to set you free. They were beginners in the process of saying yes to God at this point, and they said yes to freedom. Yes to being set free. You know, that part is pretty easy to say. But they didn't have to say it. And the next step for them was at the Red Sea. What a challenge at the Red Sea. That was a lot more difficult to say yes. They get to the Red Sea, and somebody looks back and they see the Egyptian army coming after them. They have nowhere to go. But they said yes. God got parted the Red Sea and they went across on dry land. 
Because of the first yes, they're now moving to freedom. And because of the second yes, their faith grew a huge step because they said yes. Freedom to be all that God made them to be. Freedom to worship God. Freedom to serve Him. But again, they had to say yes. There were times it was like a maybe to God. You know, God says something, but God, you know. No one here ever says that, but you know. I, I don't know about that, my God. Sometimes we're not sure of God. The maybe for the Israelites is like when they were living in the desert. They were free from Egypt, but unsure that God could or would take care of them. But as they grew in their walk with God, they said yes when it was finally time to go into the promised land and receive the promises that God had given them. Another nice story in Acts chapter 8 tells the story of a man named Philip. God sent an angel, angel to speak to Philip and he told him to, get this, get up and head south along the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Now wouldn't you like it if God gave you very specific instructions? Yeah. Isn't that nice? That's what God did with Philip. You know, for you and I, it's, <laughs> yeah, okay, you want me to do what? So, Philip followed the instructions. He went, and he says, there was a man from Ethiopia of great authority. He had come to Jerusalem to worship. He was returning to Ethiopia and sitting in his chariot reading about Isaiah the prophet. God's spirit spoke to Philip. He said, go near and overtake the chariot. And Philip said, yes. Long story short, Philip shared Christ with him. He became a Christian. <coughs> and he was baptized. He says, there's water. What hinders us from doing this? All of this happened because Philip said yes to God. Now, I'm sure this was outside of Philip's comfort zone. How many of you would run up to somebody's car and, and uh, hope that they're reading the Bible and you could strike up a conversation about God with them? Uh-uh. They'd think we're crazy. Well, I think that Philip... Couldn't have thought that, but he did. Because he followed what God told him to do. And he said yes. Oftentimes when God speaks and we need to respond yes, he is asking us to do something outside of our comfort zone, just like he did Philip. And I want to remind us that God works through ordinary people, just like you and I, to accomplish what he wants done. That story about Philip, you don't hear too much about Philip before or after. God used it. I also want to remind you that you are his hands and his feet. To carry out his will. To minister to other people. I want to share with you some of the, these ordinary people that are in the Bible. And, you know, a lot of times when I, you're going to hear these names, you're going, well, that's not an ordinary person. He was a, he fought Goliath. <laughs> but they were ordinary people. Yes. Yes. When you think about it, David was a shepherd. Mm -hmm. That was quite ordinary in those days. So let's start off with Noah. Noah said yes when God said build an ark. Abraham, 
said yes. God said, I want you to sacrifice your son. Joseph said yes <clears throat> when God asked him to forgive his brothers. We talked about that one last week. Moses said yes when God told him to go talk to Pharaoh. Rahab said yes when God asked her to hide the spies that went into Jericho. David said yes when God asked him to fight Goliath. Daniel said yes to God. God told him not to bow down to idols. The disciples said yes when Jesus asked them to leave everything behind and follow him. Now I can give you stories about each one of those that I just left, read. I'm not going to right now. But when I say God uses ordinary people to carry out his will in other people's lives, I mean that. Ordinary people, just like you and I. Now, I'm going to ask you to ask, to, to make sure that your name is added to that list as God speaks to you. It could be your name in any of those spots. Only in modern day times. When you say yes, it can take you many places. One person said it took them from rural villages to filthy brothels, to sanctuaries for the dying, to the halls of power. I want to ask you a question. Are you the adventurous type? I want to see hands. I want to see hands. Oh, yeah. You're the adventurous type. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. We have a lot of adventurous people in this room. But I can picture some of us, God says, come follow me. Some would say, where to? Others would probably say, but... Uh, I want to. But saying yes to God is like going on an adventure. Saying yes to God can lead you places that you could never imagine. It's like entering into the promised land. They had to take the land, you know. That land was promised to them, but they had to go in and take it. What if my response to God when he spoke to my heart about checking in with this individual was, well, okay, God, but you know I'm kind of busy right now, and uh, I'll get right on it as soon as I finish this project. Literally, that thought went through my mind. God said, no, now. Pick the phone right back up. Then call Linda to send the text. <laughs> I did it. Here's something to remember. Obeying God, saying yes, can lead you to divinely ordained opportunities in your life and his blessings on your life. But we have to say yes to God when he speaks. Sounds good, doesn't it? But when you step out of your comfort zone, do you really think it was in David's comfort zone to fight Goliath? Here's a teenager fighting the seasoned warrior that's double in height of him? No. But he said yes. Peter was in his comfort zone when he was fishing. 
But do you think he was in his comfort zone when Jesus said, come? Meaning, walk on water? <laughs> do you think he was in his comfort zone then? Uh -uh. But he obeyed. He said, yes. Peter could have said, but I know fishing. You want me to leave that behind? Peter could have said, yeah, you're crazy. I ain't walking on water. Nobody walks on water. But it took him to a place that he had never been. And he never experienced something quite like that since. Now, what about you? What's your area of comfort? You don't need to answer these questions, but what is your area of comfort? What's your normal routine? Just want you to think about that for a minute. And when God speaks to your heart to leave that comfort zone, what are you going to do? To leave that area of comfort in your life. And it says, you can just put your name in here, calls each and every one of you by name and says, I want you to do. And it's outside of your comfort zone. What are you going to do? What will you say to God? I can hear the wheels turn. I pray that your answer will be yes. Let your answer be yes to God as he speaks to your heart. Learn to respond the moment he speaks. My answer is yes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I believe that each person in this room wants to be used by you. Oftentimes, though, when you speak, so many things cloud our minds. We're just not sure what to say, what to do. All the what ifs go through our mind. God, I pray that we can put all of that out of our mind and just say yes. God, I want you to lead me. I want you to guide me in my life every step of the way. And I thank you, Lord, yes. that my answer yes. 